You are God's creature designed for glory. You are not designed for shame. Returning back in Jesus' name, I rebuke the devil. God is a God of mercy. When you understand that God is a God of mercy, you are a creature of intention. God created you intentionally. Get set for a moment of empowerment with your host, Benjamin Beckley. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It is your season. It is your time. It is your season to pursue, to overtake, and to recover all in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I am your host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas. Thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast today. I appreciate you. Thank you for your calls. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for your emails. Uh, they are highly valued and appreciated. May the Lord continue to use this broadcast to be a blessing to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I know certainly that by the reason of today's broadcast, something new, supernatural, will take place in your life and journey in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in case this is your first time of tuning into this broadcast, Moment of Empowerment is a revelational and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. There is a place for you in life. God did not place you on the earth to wander away, but to live as a wonder. You are here on the earth to advance the earth, to add to the earth. You are a value adder. You are not just here on the earth to waste time. You are here to add value to the earth. However, you cannot take your place on the earth without being empowered. That's why this broadcast is designed to empower you towards becoming all that God wants you to be, connect and get all that God wants you to get, and live a positive life of influence in your world. You are blessed in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'd like you to do me a favor. I want you to call the family together. Call somebody that you know needs encouragement, someone you know needs to be empowered, someone that you love so much but is passing through difficulty and you trust God that God can bring them out of the situation. I'd like you to send a message to them. Tell them the station where you are watching me right now Tell them to hook on because God's word is about coming with power and God's word can change situation. I'd like you to tell them the station, send the link, go on, send the message to someone and tell them something is about to happen today because it surely will be a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. It is time to connect with revelation right in God's word. God's word is an instrument for empowerment. In God's word lies power. And God's word will empower you to live a positive life and also change your situation in life. I realize by revelation that God's word is what gives us access to God's world. God's word is what gives us access to God's world. And when you gain access to God's world, you enjoy the best of life. When you gain access to God's world, the terrain of God, you can enjoy the best of God in the world of God. In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and God was the Word. So God's Word and God, they are, just, they are connected. And the Bible says the same, talking about the word, was in the beginning with God. And verse 3 said, all things, things in plural, all things, including your things, were made by him. Talking about the word, and without him was not anything made that was made. So nothing works in life without the word of God. Everything that was made was made by God's word. So God's word serves as the raw material for making our world look as the best. If anything is wrong with your world, there is a solution in God's word. And as we connect with God's word today, solution is coming your way. Whatever is missing in your life, whatever is missing in your world, God's word will fix them up for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Through him, all things were made, including your thing. 
So anything that you need, anything you desire, there is a provision for it in God's word. My prayer today is that God's word will work for you and it will lead you to your place of testimony in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, before we get into the revelation for today, I'd like to invite you to any of our life transforming services at the Empowerment Center. I want you to come enjoy the presence of God, come enjoy the power of God, and come connect with the provision of God that makes life better at the Empowerment Center. The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, multicultural, loving family church of God that is on assignment to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Our assignment is to empower you to fulfill destiny, to be all that God wants you to be, and step into the reality of what God has made available for you. Join us in any of our services on Sundays, our service all 10 a.m. to 12 noon, and on Thursdays, we meet 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The address is right there on the screen. Write down the address if you need more information. Call the number on the screen. We are waiting for you. God wants you. God loves you. And we are on assignment to express the love of God to you wherever you are, whosoever you are. Come as you are. God loves you as you are. And I can tell you something. You can never be a part of the service at the Empowerment Center and things will not change in your life because God's word remains the same. And it is your turn. It is your season. It is your time to experience a change of life. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday or any of our services on Thursday, and you shall be blessed as you come in Jesus' name. Now today, by the grace of God, I shall be starting a series that I have entitled, The Reality of Eternity. The Reality of Eternity. And I'd like you to understand that the best of God you can enjoy in life is traceable to the depth of knowledge you have. Your level of knowledge influences your level of accomplishment in life. Knowledge is essential for enjoying the best of God. If you will enjoy the best of God in life, you need to pursue after knowledge. To lack knowledge is to be grounded in life. In Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible says, God speaking here said, Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Not because they cannot pray, not because they do not go to church, but because they have no knowledge. So where there is no knowledge, it is easy to be in captivity. Liberty as well as freedom is a function of truth. Thou shalt know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So my people, God talking, I said my people, they are my people, yet they have gone into captivity. They are my people, but because they have no knowledge, they ended up in captivity. The Bible says, and their honorable men are famished. Their multitudes dried up with thirst. What they need is not made available because they lack knowledge. So knowledge is essential if you will enjoy the best of God in life. And I want you to know that there is power in knowledge. Knowledge positions you for greatness. Knowledge gives you confidence. When you know something and you know you know that thing, you have confidence. Knowledge empowers you for dominion. If you will gain dominion in life, you need knowledge. And more importantly, in the journey of life to enjoy the best of God, you need the knowledge of the person of God, you need the knowledge of the program of God, and you need the knowledge of the provisions of God for your life. The knowledge of God as a person, the knowledge of God's program, and the knowledge of God's provision. When you have this knowledge, you gain dominion in your world. Knowledge is essential. And that's why you want to expose yourself to the truth of God's word. You want to connect with the knowledge of the truth that is embedded in God's word. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23, Proverbs 23 and verse 23, the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. <laughs> so that means go for the truth. Buy the truth. It's costly, but buy it. it. It may not look as if you need it, but buy it. Because when you buy the truth and you sell it not, it sets you free. It gives you confidence. It empowers you for dominion. Now look at what it said. It said, also wisdom, instruction, 
and understanding. These things are essential for triumph in life. You cannot live a more better life than the level of knowledge at your disposal. And that's why today I want you to know and connect with relevant knowledge in the area of eternity. I want you to understand as you watch me anywhere you are that God has a program for your life. I want you to know that. God has a program for your life. There is a program God has for you in all areas of your life. There are certain things to know if you will manifest in that program. God has a program for your marriage. God has a program for your children. God has a program for you here on earth. And as part of God's program, he also wants you to live and reign with him in eternity. God wants it to be well with you on the earth. He also wants it to be well with you in eternity. God wants you to reign with him forever in eternity. However, you cannot fully manifest this until you have the knowledge of certain things. There are certain things to know in order for you to reign with God well on the earth and also reign with him well in eternity. And that's my assignment today. My assignment in this series is to be able to connect, with, with you, to connect you with revelational knowledge that will empower you to rule in your world and also to reign with God. Now, our anchor text for today's teaching is in Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 down to verse 31. It's a pretty long scripture, but I'm going to read it because in it lies the revelation that we need to connect with in order for us to get the knowledge of what God wants us to know. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to verse 31. The Bible says there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar that was named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Verse 21. And this beggar desires to be fed with a crumb which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs also came and licked his sir. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, be in torment, and see Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Abra Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. God will comfort you. Now verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great God fix, so that they which would pass from earth can earth, Neither can they that want to pass from there will be able to come. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him, talking about Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went from, unto them from the dead, they will repent. Uh, uh, verse 31. And he said unto him, If they are not going to hear Moses and the prophet, neither will they be persuaded, even though one rose from the dead. May the Lord bless his word. Now, that is the, 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 the scripture that has unveiled to us the full reality of eternity. I believe personally that this is one of the life-transforming messages that Jesus passed across to humanity in the Bible. One of them, because he's showing us how art looks like, how the way we live our life also influence the way we end our journey, also shows us what takes place in eternity. And when you look at this text very well, you will see that it involves two people. The Lazarus, Lazarus and the rich man, they were on the earth, two of them on the earth, they have two different circumstances. The rich man was wealthy, enjoying life, but Lazarus was poor, and he had saw the dogs were coming to lick his soul. He was so poor, man. Poor man. He was so poor a man. And if they were living in the same place. Two people, two different circumstances, but living in the same place. Lazarus was brought to the man's gate every day, and he was there only for him to survive 
through the crumbs that is coming from the table. But all through this text, we never had any instance where the rich man had to go take care of Lazarus. But something happened. One thing happened to both of them, both of them died. And something happened again. They found themselves in two different places. One found himself at the bosom of Abraham, and the other one found himself in a place that he called El, and he told us that it was a place that was full of flame, and it is a place of torment. But something also happened. One was enjoying comfort, and the other one was enjoying torment. However, one was trying to make an amendment, but the other one was just enjoying where it was. He was trying to make an amendment, but lo, it was too late. That is the summary of this text. And when you look at it very importantly and very well, you realize that God is passing a message to across to earth, especially you that is watching me, that he wants, he wants you to hear me. He said, if, we did not, if, we, if they would not hear Moses, then they are not going to hear anybody that is going to come from the grave. So God has sent me to you today to pass this message across to you so that you can hear me and know how to rule your world and also to reign with God. Now, there are five revelational truths that I want us to connect with from this text. I'm going to share them with you in series. There are five of them that the Holy Spirit has showed me in relation to the reality of eternity. Number one of them which I serve and I want you to understand is that death is a common denominator. I'll repeat that again. Death is a common denominator. One of the major lessons that we can learn from this text is that even though both of them passed through different circumstances, their situation was different, but one thing is common to them, it was death. Both of them died. In verse 22, Luke chapter 16 that we have read, the Bible says it came to pass, the beggar died, and it was carried by angels into the bosom of Abraham. He was carried to the bosom of Abraham. And also, the rich man also died, and he was buried. The man was carried, the rich man was buried. The man was carried, the rich man was buried. So, they both died. And I realize in the journey of, the, in, in the journey of life that death is a common denominator. No matter your, your level, no matter your position, your, no matter what you are commanding, no matter your result in life, death is a common denominator. This scripture unveils to us that death has no respect for wealth. Death has no respect for title. The Lazarus was called by his name. The rich man was called a rich man, but death has no respect for title. The rich man died. Lazarus died. Anyone living, death is a common denominator. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible says, It is appointed unto man to die once, and after that it is judgment. So we can discover here that death is a denominator. It, it, it is a common denominator for everyone. No matter what country, no matter what color, no matter your achievement, death is a common denominator. Now, this is not to set fear in your heart. This is not to make you to be afraid of death. Why? Because anyone that is in Christ, death actually is a gain. For anyone in Christ, death is not the end. It's actually a transition into a better life. Because Paul the Apostle made us to understand in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, he said, for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. So anyone living in Christ, death to them is gain. Death is not the end of your life, even though it is a common denominator. It's only passing a message across to us that one day everything will cease to exist. Everything will cease to exist. Everything will stop. But that is not going to be the end of your life. There is still continuity in the, in, 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 after that. Something continues according to the scripture. Life continues. But this life that continues is different. Now, we, we saw from the scripture that death is a common denominator. Death does not necessarily connote, uh, the, 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 it, means, it just means the point of end, where there is no more existence. Some people will still remain, they will not die like every other person dies, but there will surely be an end. Because in the teachings of Jesus, he made us to understand that one day, everything will end. And when everything ends, everything ceases to exist. So that is death. So we understand in Revelation number one that from this scripture, death is a common denominator. Now number two revelation I saw here from this text that we have read and want to share with you in relation to the reality of eternity is that eternity is a reality. Eternity is real. This scripture showed us that 
eternity is real. When you read through that scripture, Luke 16, 19 to 31 that we have read, we discover that life on earth is not the end of our living. Our life currently is not going to be the end of our living. There is still a life after we die. There is eternity. And from the text, it shows us that there is a place that is good, which brings comfort, and there is another place that is not good. It said there is a heaven and there is a hell. And when you look at it, it said that Lazarus was taken to the bosom of Abraham. That is just like a representative of heaven. That is to represent a place of goodness, a place of refreshing, a place of comfort. He said also there is a place called hell because the rich man actually said he was in hell and he was speaking from hell. Because hell brings torment to him. So we can deduce from the scripture that there is eternity. Eternity is real. It's not in my way. It's real. It's eternity is real. Now, you must understand that God's word is the final authority. God's word is, is what has the final say. I've had people come to me and said, no, there is no eternity. All of us will live on the earth and we're going to live forever. We'll live forever and ever and ever. Okay, wonderful. You may believe that, but God's word is the only truth. Oh, God's word is what contains the truth. The truth we need in life is as embedded in God's word. And it's going to be ironic if you refuse to accept what God is saying in, 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 because of what you think. And at the end of the day, you found out that there is a place called heaven and there is a place called hell. That is why you want to be prepared. Now, let's look at something. Eternity is real. Luke 16, when we look at verse 22 to 23, the Bible says it came to pass, the beggar died. He was carried into the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died, and he was buried. And in, in hell, in hell, he lifted uh, up his eyes. He was in torment. He saw Abraham, and he saw Lazarus. So the rich man was in hell. There is a place called hell. All through the scripture, it is evident that there is a place called hell. And there is also a place called heaven. Heaven is real, and hell is real. Hell is also real. But you cannot be in the two at the same time. In Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, verse 43 to 45, the Bible says, if your hand offend you, cut it off. Because it is better for you to enter into life, talking about eternity, maimed than having two hands to go into hell. So there is a place called hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Verse 44, he said, we are there are worms, the worms in the place does not die, and the fire does not quench. And if your foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life out than having your two foots cast into hell, into the fire that cannot be quenched. So what is this talking about? It's talking about that if there are things that will stop you from reigning with God in eternity, you got to cut them off. you got to separate yourself from there. That is what the Bible is talking about. you got to separate yourself from things that will not allow you to reign with God in eternity. Now, when you look at scripture, there is a place called heaven, there is a place called hell. But this is the good news. God wants you to reign with him in heaven. That is the desire of God. That is the program of God. God wants you to reign with him in heaven. God does not want you to spend the rest of your life in hell. There is surely an end. One day everything will end. But God desires that you make heaven. Because hell is not prepared for you. Hell is not prepared for you. I want you to know you are too precious to God for him to lose you in hell. God loves you so much that he doesn't want you to go to hell. Hell is not a place of comfort. It's a place of torment. Hell is not a place of goodness. It's a place of sorrow. But God desires that you reign with him in eternity. God desires that you reign with him where he is. And that is one of the things you got to understand. God doesn't want you to go to hell. Because hell does not look palatable. Hell, according to scripture, Matthew chapter 25 Verse 41, Bible says, hell is prepared for the devil and his angel. So hell is not prepared for you. You are precious to God. God loves you so much. Hell is not prepared for you as you watch me, but you must make a decision not to go there. Hell is prepared, according to scripture, for the devil and for his angel. However, if you will reign with God in heaven, if you will not end up in hell, then you must live for God on earth, and you must walk with him on the earth. You must accept God's provision 
for your salvation, and this is what will guarantee eternity for you. If you will reign with God as God desires, because it is something for God to, God wants you to come to him. God wants you to end with him. God has the program. God has the desire. But it's another thing for you to accept it. I might offer you something, but the acceptance is yours. God is saying, I'm offering you eternity with me. I'm making available for you my place. I want you to come live with me. That is what God is saying. After the world is over, I want you to come and reign with me. But the decision is yours. You can either choose to accept it or you choose to forfeit it. But this is the world. Heaven is real and hell is real according to the scripture. And there is nothing that can change the reality of that. Now, when you look at it, you realize that if we will reign with God in heaven, we must live for him on the earth and we must walk with him on the earth. We have to accept the provision he has made available for our eternity and that is by salvation. You have to accept the person of the Lordship of Jesus. And I know you are watching me right now somewhere. And the spirit in you is bearing you witness that if I'm to die today, if the end is to come right now, where am I going to end my journey? Am I ending in heaven or am I going to find myself like that rich man in the bosom of uh, in, in hell? Now, in my next broadcast, I'm going to continue and I'm going to show you certain things that this man does not find himself in hell because he was poor, because he was rich. No, 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 no. And Abraham, um, um, Lazarus does not find himself in heaven because he was poor. That was not the reason. I'm going to show you something in my next broadcast. I don't want you to miss that. But right before I shut down today, I want to pray for you. You know within yourself that you don't have a walk with God and you desire to have one. I want to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, call the number on the screen. I want to pray for you. I want, you want to come to God. You want to accept a new life. You want to walk with him so that you can guarantee your place in eternity. And as I pray for you, you shall surely be blessed in Jesus' name. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you have called up, if you have prayed that prayer, call the number. I want to hear from you. I want to... Hear yeah, what God is doing through you and what God has done for you. I want to hear from you because this journey is a journey that you need to work together with God and God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we are privileged to have a new website now that you can watch all the past episodes of A Moment of Empowerment. You can watch it. The information is on the screen, www.empowermenttv.org. Go there, watch all of our past episodes and some other messages that will be a blessing to you. And I know you shall surely be blessed in the precious name of Jesus. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone sick, be healed right now by the power of God in the name of Jesus. Till I come your way again next time, stay empowered and keep your part in others. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Watch us every week at the same time for your moment of empowerment. Visit us online at wordrevival.org or call us at 972-639-1762 or stop by and see us at 838 Secretary Drive, Arlington, Texas.